Hello everyone, I'm Animus J, and welcome back to another Minecraft video. Today we are going to be going over customizations and fixes for your smart minecart loading and unloading system. So firstly, let's go over how to customize your smart minecart loading system because that is the number one thing that is asked regarding this. The issue that a lot of people have is that I designed it so that this minecart with a chest or hopper minecart, whichever one you're using, will literally only leave this docking station if it is 100% full. And by 100%, I do mean exactly 100%. If you are even one single item short of a full chest minecart or a hopper minecart, your minecart is not going to leave. Now, the issue with this is that not everybody wants it to be completely full. Some people want it to be used just to transfer items rather than for fueling things as this was essentially designed for. And I myself, on the most recent episode of J World, found myself in the same exact situation. So for example, if I was going to be transferring half a stack of hoppers, one single piece of raw pork, a stack of cooked pork chop, two empty maps, a trident, well, that's not going to actually fill up my minecart hopper. Even though every single slot is going to be filled, as you can see here, it's never going to leave because it is not technically full. We would have to have a full stack of empty maps, a full stack of raw pork chop, and a full stack of hoppers in order to make this full, seeing as the trident itself does count as a full slot, and we already have a full stack of cooked pork chop. Those slots are done, but these three are not completely full. So how can we get it to leave despite it's not being full? Well, the answer is actually quite simple. So if you haven't built this already, go back to the first video and go ahead and build this up. It's not very complicated. It's actually very simple, but we're not going to go over it in this video. We're just going to go over fixes and customizations. So depending on whether you're using a minecart with a hopper or a minecart with a chest will determine how you're going to customize this. Either way, what you're going to do is you're going to break this redstone torch here, and then you're going to put a comparator in its spot, and it's going to be facing the other comparator. And then what you're going to do is if you are using a hopper minecart as your loader then you're going to put a hopper down behind the comparator if you're using a chest minecart then you're going to put a single chest behind the comparator and the reason for that is because a hopper minecart only has one two three four and five slots whereas the minecart with a chest obviously has nine by three which is 27 and so in order to proportionally measure when we want our items to leave we're going to use the appropriate measuring system so i'm going to go ahead and use a chest for this demonstration but what i'm going to do is i'm going to put in the amount of items that i need or rather want in order to have my minecart leave. So let's say I want my minecart with a chest to leave when it has only nine slots filled. What I'll do is in my chest, I'll fill nine slots. As you can see what that does is it activates the comparator. It sends a compare line into our measuring comparator. If you don't understand how any of this works, then make sure to check out the video, How Comparators Work. It's on my channel, uploaded probably a link in the top right corner right now as well. And that'll explain what it is that we're exactly doing with this magic. So with nine slots full in our comparator chest, as we're going to call it, what that's going to do is make it so that when your minecart with a chest measures the same on the comparator, it's going to leave. So if I fill it up like so, what we have is we have eight full slots. We have, or excuse me, seven full slots. We have half of the eighth. Let's go ahead and throw a little bit more in there. And there we go. So once we got to on the comparator level, what measures the slots greater than our comparator chest, it caused our system to take off. Now you can see my com or my cart is having a little bit of trouble getting over the sill, and we'll cover some fixes for that in a second. But let's go ahead and replace this with a hopper and i want to demonstrate something else to you guys really quick and that is the fact that non-stackable items such as tridents fill one entire slot those are obviously expensive but what is not expensive 
is wooden hose. So let's say I want my hopper to leave or my minecart hopper to leave when it has a two and a half slots full. All I gotta do is put two wooden hose in and then half a stack of items will count as two and a half full slots. Same way if you're using the chest, you don't have to waste all of your valuable materials. What you can do is you can just use a wooden hose because they're cheap to craft. They are non-stackable. So this counts as the same as 64 coal because you cannot add more hose to one single spot. So just a little tip there for filling up your chest a little bit cheaper. Now, one other disclaimer as we come over here to the comparator explanation area is that the way redstone behaves with a comparator is not very straightforward. So I have nine stacks, nine full stacks inside of this chest coming out of the comparator. And you can see we've lit up five blocks of redstone okay that's what this lamp is signifying now if i add only one more stack into there we get to six however it is not that straightforward as you can see i added one more stack and we're still only on six so by having 10 stacks we're at six and by having 11 stacks we are still at six so in order to get up to seven, what I have to do is add yet another one, okay? So keep in mind that when you are setting up your comparator chest, it is not going to be exact all of the time. You may have to play with it a little bit in order to get it to the level that you want it to. Now then let's discuss the other biggest request that I've received, which is to send it off when this thing is empty. So. What we're going to do is we're going to place a block right here next to our piston, another one adjacent to our torch, and that one's going to have a comparator on top of it. That comparator is going to be going into a block just like so. That new block is going to have a torch on the back of it with redstone underneath next to it and then a repeater facing in like that. What this is going to do is this comparator is checking your hopper. When your hopper is empty, the comparator will turn off, which will activate this torch, activating this line and deactivating your piston, allowing your cart to flow on. So if I just put half of a stack of items in here, you can see the piston activates, allowing the mine cart to get trapped the next time it comes along. So if we send a cart along, you'll see the cart is going to fill up with the half stack. The moment it does, the piston retracts. Now, if we were to fill this up with a backlog of extra items, it can still work in the way that it did in the beginning, where it will stay here until the minecart is completely full. And once it's full, it will still release the cart. So when you have it in this configuration, what it'll do is either wait until the minecart is full, or otherwise it's going to wait until your hopper is completely empty. And of course, if you wanted to have the custom loader that we went over just a minute ago, you can still have that going on along with the checker to see if your hopper is empty simply by keeping your comparator and your chest or hopper in place and just building the rest of this around it. Now then, as with the first video, there are some bugs with bedrock associated to timing, minecart speeds, locations, odds and evens, positive and negative accesses. It's, it's, guys, it's really strange, okay? So if yours just isn't working right, if it's not docking properly, try building it back by one block or forward by one block or try rotating it. Just try different variations. It's not the redstone, it's not the build. Believe me, I had a friend in my Discord who tried building it on different axes and it worked on the positive and negative X, it worked on the positive Z, but not the negative Z. Why, how, I don't know, it's bedrock, that's how. With this specific build, you can see the gray wool here. When I built it with the detector lined up with the gray wool, it worked. When I moved it back by one block, it did not work anymore. So just play around with the location a little bit in order to get it to work properly. Now, one issue that I've had as well with the loading system is Animus. My cart is sitting really high on the powered rail and the detector rail is not activated from it. Well, what you can do in order to avoid that from happening is move your powered rails back a little bit in order to stop it from coming in so fast. 
And then the other thing is make sure you're not coming in from some steep downhills into your loading system because that's going to cause it to probably come in with too much speed, especially if you're coupling in some powered rails on that downhill slant. Now, in regards to the unloading system, some things that you can do in order to fix it if it's not exactly working along with you is add in some soul sand, like I said. You can play with powered rails and unpowered rails. But the other thing is that in order to eliminate some of the variance, which is caused by this repeater and the speed of your minecart, what you can do is you can try this setup right here. Now this is not the ideal setup because this is not tileable. And what that means is I cannot do multiple systems coming in right next to each other because the redstone will activate both at the same time. That's why I came up with this design right here because you can put one after the other right next to each other and they will all work just fine. But if you're in a world where that doesn't matter, what you need to do is off of your hopper, which remember your hopper has to be pointed into a chest or other storage item. You're going to place a comparator into a block. Put a torch on top of that block, a block on top of your torch and a block on top of your comparator, and then a spot of redstone on top of that block right there. What that does is the moment there's an item, if I lock this hopper right here, the moment there's an item inside of the hopper, what that does is it turns on the comparator, which inverts our torch, turning it off, which depowers this block, depowering the redstone spot that is consequently powering our powered rail. So with all of that off, your minecart will just sit there and not go anywhere. And then once the hopper is empty, the comparator will turn off, the torch will turn back on, repowering this block, repowering your redstone, repowering your powered rail, and sending your minecart on its way. Then of course, if you're still having issues with this, you can add soul sand in order to slow it down a little bit before it comes into its final resting location. And of course, you can try the method that we had over here, which is a building up a block in order to slow it down even more. And the other thing is that having this slant right here, what it does is even though your minecart may still have a little bit of speed to get back up, a lot of times it doesn't have the speed to make it all the way to the top of this hill and get back over again. So I hope that answers all of your questions. If it doesn't, feel free to join our Discord and we'll do the best that we can to help you out and get you up and running in your own world. That's all the questions I can think of that I've been asked, all the problems that I've seen people having and specifically addressing the customization issue that people have been having. So if you haven't already, please hit the like button on this video. If you haven't, I would love to have you subscribe. And that's it for today, you guys. I'm Animus J. I'll see you in the next video.